Welcome to The Learning Curve. I'm Marjorie Began. The 2018-2019 school year in Mansfield has come to a close. Here to recap some of the year's highlights is my guest, Teresa Murphy, Superintendent of the Mansfield Schools. Welcome back, Teresa. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, Marjorie. This, you have now been superintendent for two years. Would you like to tell us your thoughts about that? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, I, first of all, I love my job. It's different every day. There's something that comes across my desk in my office in the schools that is different for me to have to think about and problem solve and make decisions about. But we are surrounded by really terrific, smart, passionate people. Um, our staff is just tremendous. They all care about students, want the best for them, uh, are looking to give them a high quality education. Um, and that is faculty and staff throughout the district from central office through our five schools into the different departments. Uh, we have students who come to school ready to learn and they are uh, to me the highlight of my job because they are involved with so many activities, they take on leadership roles, and uh, the classrooms are very busy engaging places because of them. And of course our families and the greater Mansfield community are so supportive of students and their education. So I am uh, very grateful to have found a home in the Mansfield Public Schools and to be working with our students in the greater school community. Now we sent off a whole new graduating class this we year. We did, we did. And uh, those students are uh, indicative of the Mansfield Public Schools. They are uh, tremendous students who uh, are going in a lot of different directions. We have students who are going on to college, students who are going into the workplace, we had a number of students, about a half dozen, who are going into the armed forces to serve uh, our country. Um, and they had so many interests. They are a group of students who um, not only uh, took on their education, but pursued extracurricular activities, including making and creating some of their own clubs and activities. They were active in the visual arts and the performing arts and athletics. They gave so much to the community. We also, in that group of uh, students, several hundred students who graduated on the stage at Xfinity Center a couple of weeks ago, we had a number of students who uh, graduated from the high school's evening division, which is an alternative high school experience for many of our students. And so we're proud of all of our graduates. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, seeing where they go in, in a number of years. As I told them, I'm hoping that more than a few of them come back to me in four years looking for a teaching position in the Mansfield Schools so they too can give back to our community. Well, that would be neat because mm -hmm. you are a product of the Mansfield Schools. I am. I am a product of the Mansfield Schools, very proudly of it. And um, so it, it is a way to give back to our community. Oh, definitely. Well, let's start with something fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new addition to the school system, and that's Bentley. Bentley, we do. Bentley is um, an assistance dog. Bentley is a trained service dog who is uh, owned by our school resource officer, Detective Ken Wright. So Detective Ken Wright is taken on uh, ownership of uh, Bentley. That means that our taxpayers have not paid for Bentley. It did not come from schools or town's budget. And uh, Bentley lives with Detective Wright. Um, he adopted him from the uh, Needs Organization, which is a nonprofit that trains dogs to serve as service dogs and, in our case, as an assistance dog, meaning that Bentley comes to school every day. He is with Detective Wright every day in, um, in his office, throughout the schools. And as we, um, as we gain more knowledge about what students need, we understand it is certainly not just the academics, but it's also, we need to be mindful of their um, mental health, their social, emotional health, and an assistance dog like Bentley can help us in that regard. Uh, you know, we're finding many students who have experienced trauma in their young lives. Uh, Bentley, as an assistance dog, can bring comfort. Uh, we find that for students who sometimes have a hard time actually coming to school, 
Uh, you know, in the old days, it might be a truant officer. Well, now we're doing it in a way that uh, Bentley can greet students. Uh, some students just need to touch base with an assistance dog in, in, with Bentley, and it helps to navigate some of those other challenges that the, the students have. So Bentley came to us uh, in April, and uh, he has uh, just gotten to know the school district, meaning um, he has visited classrooms when teachers have invited him, him in. He has, um, uh, particularly with our adjustment counselors and our school psychologists, the Bentley has made uh, connections in those offices and uh, during some sessions, some group sessions. Uh, Bentley's everywhere. Uh, Bentley was at a concert last week and had his picture with the Jonas Brothers and I said that Bentley has a better social life than I do. <laughs> but Bentley is in the schools every day and is, um, it's interesting because I personally am afraid of dogs. However, you can't possibly be afraid of Bentley. He is um, just a, a, a real caregiver. Uh, so uh, Detective Wright has been introducing Bentley to students, to staff members. He came to our uh, last district health and wellness council meeting so that everyone could start to think about how they can utilize Bentley in their classrooms. So as a, a dog, he is not a dog, he was not trained, for example, as a canine dog that would be seeking out drugs or other substances. He is strictly a comfort and assistance dog so that we can support our students in just yet another way. I think you mentioned when we were talking about some kids that were having problems staying in the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you want to mention that? Yes, yeah. he. Uh, it's really interesting because there are, um, there are students who really do have a difficult time with, uh, you know, maintaining uh, that attendance at school. And so we have seen, Detective Wright has told us that oftentimes if he's working in his office for a few minutes and Bentley is in the office, a student may walk by his office, which is at the high school, he'll look in and he'll say, oh, can I just pet Bentley for a minute? And the student will stay with Bentley for a minute, two, three, four, and then say, oh, okay, I gotta get back to class. And they head right back to class. So we're seeing uh, many students who just really benefit from having that opportunity. I think the research about pets has been uh, very well documented, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, the, the value of pets in nursing homes or um, you know, living in a family home. And uh, we're starting to see, I say we're starting to see because we are a little uh, ahead of the cutting edge that uh, we are have this assistance dog in our school and is due to Detective, Detective Wright's uh, interest in having that dog uh, who lives in his home and he's responsible for the care and feeding of, mm. of Bentley. But Bentley's great. Bentley will be at Family Fun Night on <laughs> July 9th. So if anyone is uh, downtown Mansfield that evening, they'll be able to meet Bentley. <laughs> that will be a that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be your ambassador, it, that's he, for sure. He certainly is. <laughs> now with this fun saying mm -hmm. hello to Bentley, there are also goodbyes that come in the course of the year, and you had many retirees across the board. And we really did this year. Um, we had several people who retired mid-year, but we had a group of about 20 people who retired in June and we held a retirement uh, party for all of the people who uh, were leaving as of June 30 at the end of the school year. Uh, they included teachers uh, from each of the schools, uh, let's see, a custodian, uh, it included a um, office assistants, uh, paraprofessionals, uh, someone from the food service organization. So we have lost um, uh, quite a few people. You know, they were valued employees. They contributed to Mansfield. At one point, I had uh, combined their years of service, and it was well over 500 years of service oh that they had contributed to the students of the Mansfield Public Schools. So uh, we are very sorry to see them them go. Um, you know, certainly the historical perspective and the experience of a veteran educator. Uh, cannot be understated. It is so valuable. Now, I think some of the teachers might be coming back as subs. Correct, yes. We have a lot of uh, retirees who they love the work that they do. 
they're not so interested in the 24-7, which teaching is. It's yeah. certainly not an eight to three job. Uh, there's all that take home work, but they do still like working with the students and uh, so they will be uh, working with us as sometimes tutors for students who have been out for medical absences or other tutoring needs and also substitute teachers. So we look forward to welcoming as many back who would like to come. Oh, that's great. But that's also making you very busy during the summer because oh, you yes. have a lot of positions to fill. Will you be able to fill them all by September? Yes. You know, it's interesting. I actually, before I came here today, I had two interviews for high school positions. And um, we do have a lot of hiring. And hiring uh, um, teachers who are, um, you know, more recently out of college, uh, they are excited, they're passionate, they come in with lots of great, fresh ideas. I do go back to that idea that experience is very important. Uh, but we're fortunate because the new teachers who will be hired, uh, we have a terrific mentoring and induction program in Mansfield. It's a program that um, Mary Watkins, principal of the high school, and Dave McGovern, principal of the middle school, uh, started working on. Next year will be our third year with the program. And each of our teachers is assigned a mentor who is an experienced veteran teacher who spends, um, well, by state regulations, 30 hours, but we know that a new teacher relies on their mentor so much more than 30 hours over the course of their first year. And then we also have the opportunity to work with them at six after school meetings to be able to help them with parent communication, classroom management. So we, we are looking forward to the teachers we hire and we'll make sure that they are supported so that we can retain those teachers during their first years. And they bring in new ideas, they bring in new spirit. Um, you know, the, the older people, as you said, their experience is tremendous. Mm -hmm. But sometimes tempering that with new ideas and, uh, you it's know, makes for a, mm -hmm. a, a much stronger, mm -hmm. you know, community. And the, uh, the mentoring program seems to be really kind of an exciting thing, mm -hmm. you know, because being just put into a, a new school system <sighs> all at once and trying to learn everything, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's daunting. It is. And the research shows that uh, we lose, not we at Mansfield, but education in general loses a teacher their f within their first five years. And so we want to make sure they're well supported. We are um, under Assistant Superintendent Michael Conley, uh, direction. He has now partnered with a local community and they are working on a year two program so that the new teachers in their second year also have opportunities to not just observe in our own schools but can go to other communities and observe classrooms. So we're partnering with that other district so that we can be able to provide them with a second year of support. Oh that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. So there are a lot of things going on and one of them are new technologies. And uh, you were rolling out a, a new technology plan in the course of the year. And do you want to explain that? Yes, I would. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Last spring, a year ago, uh, Mr. Conley had pulled together a team of teachers, technology people, um, parents from some of our school councils, and uh, community members. And they developed a comprehensive technology plan that includes a plan of action for how we would be moving forward with uh, providing students with devices. It also includes um, you know, the, the instructional piece of how we will help students navigate everything from cyber safety to um, the etiquette of, um, of uh, using technology to the uh, ways of researching. And so the co it's a comprehensive plan. It covers anything having to do with instructional technology, digital learning within the schools. And this year, the focus for us has really been on our preparation for next year's one-to-one -one technology rollout. Um, as our community knows, uh, Mansfield has been highly supportive of technology within the schools over several years. Uh, capital Improvement Funding provides smart boards and document cameras and uh, laptops 
and the device that we have been purchasing over the last few years is a, called a Chromebook. And a Chromebook is similar to a laptop. Uh, they are uh, cost effective for a school district. They provide students with access to um, uh, the internet and it's quick and easy access. I mean, you turn it on and you are connected to the internet. At the same time, the town has been supportive of our uh, improving infrastructure in the schools. So for example, at town meeting this spring, people may have noticed if they wanted to get onto their devices with, uh, with a, uh, pa a no password just to get onto the Wi-Fi. And uh, we've increased our infrastructure throughout our school, all of our schools, not just in Mansfield High School Auditorium. And so um, next year, Qualters Middle School, because of several reasons, one being it had enough Chromebooks, so we had to purchase very few to be able to provide one device for each student. Mm. And so every teaching space will have a set of Chromebooks for that class. So if it's, for example, maybe a special education classroom with eight students, small groups that filter in and out during the day, that would be uh, maybe a, a group of 10 Chromebooks. A regular classroom size would have 24, 25, whatever are needed. And um, so students at the middle school will be taking our first steps into one-to-one -one technology. Uh, we are behind some of the districts in that, but it's worked out to our benefit because we've been able to see all of the um, all of the mistakes they may have made and be able to have a really uh, well thought out plan for one-to-one -one technology. So while next year, Qualters, each student will have a device in their classroom, we're also increasing the number of devices at all of the other schools from the high school on. And we've developed a, a five-year plan to be able to bring a one-to-one -one technology to all of our schools, so from the littlest ones up to the uh, older students. Uh, right now, we're keeping the devices in school. The following year, when we move into the high school, our eighth graders and high school students will be bringing those devices home. Next year gives us the opportunity to make sure we've got ourselves in a good place so we have everything thought out from insurance, if the device breaks, to how to keep the kids safe when they have the internet, um, you know, outside of the schoolroom. Yeah, I think many parents might worry about that, you mm -hmm. know. Um, geez, <laughs> where are they going to go with that? They're going to do their homework, but what are they going to do in the meantime? Absolutely. You know? And, you know, we're, we're looking at the Chromebooks because they have been um, really beneficial for uh, the, we, what we had seen was grades 3 through 12 plus. However, we're now finding the Robinson students doing quite well with the Chromebooks uh, because they, we were using iPads uh, in some of, with some of the younger grades. And iPads are still very appropriate for some situations and uh, applications. And so we are, we're not only using Chromebooks, we are still making sure that every school is having what they need. And I think you had mentioned um, you're actually not purchasing them, but leasing them. That is very true. We have uh, used a purchase uh, practice in the past. We would purchase the devices. And um, uh, Lori Latender, our Director of Technology and our Assistant Superintendent of uh, Finance, uh, Ed Donahue, uh, took a look this year at the idea of uh, lease options. And so we will be leasing these devices, uh, four-year leases, they are a uh, very cost-effective means of uh, purchasing the uh, Chromebooks. And then at the end of four years, instead of us having to try to sell or dispose of the Chromebook, we send them back to the company, and the company sends us the new batch. And because we're rolling out this program over the course of years, it will mean we're never purchasing or leasing, I should say, um, you know, the exact same number every year. It'll be just phased in. So we're excited about that leasing program. Uh, at town meeting last spring, our um, community voted to approve and allow us to do a four-year lease. Oh, that was mm -hmm. that's great. Yes. It seems like an economical way to do it. Very much so. Because they are mm -hmm. going to get a lot of use. And then if you have hundreds of them, yes. then mm -hmm. how do you dispose of them? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a huge mm -hmm. thing, you know? Yes. Uh, 
With all this new technology, I know that there is some of it that is now being used for new safety procedures in the schools. Yes, yes. Uh, safety and security are ongoing concerns, um, not just on the part of uh, me, but also um, through our uh, police chief, our fire chief. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have two school resource offices who are assigned to the schools during the school year. We also have um, Justin, Lieutenant Justin DeRosio, who is a, a fire lieutenant, who uh, is the liaison to the schools in uh, regards to the EMS. Uh, you know, with the number of students we have in our schools every day, some of whom are medically compromised, we frequently have an ambulance that's called to support a student or, or an adult. And so having a, uh, a fire uh, representative who is our go-to has been really helpful. We have uh, undertaken uh, exercises so that we can, um, in a sense, rehearse some of the extraordinary safety and security issues that we've seen throughout the country. Uh, we work closely with um, fire police, uh, DPW, with uh, relationship to security here in Mansfield. Um, we have purchased a number of items which came out of town support from last November at town meeting. Uh, right now we've been rolling out the visitor management system which is um, a, uh, if a visitor comes to, we started at the facilities department, so if a vendor comes into our facilities department to do some work in the school, they would give their ID, a picture ID, government issued uh, ID, and we would uh, do, it does a SORI, which is a sex abuse um, uh, record check, and then it prints out a visitor badge which has a picture ID so that if they're going to be in the school they have uh, we can look at that and know that that person has already been screened so we started with the uh, software it's a little just a little kind of box and a monitor slide your license and within seconds it's printed out and uh, then we moved into the high school and I believe uh, we are now into Qualters. So by, by the end of um, July, by mid-July, we will, all schools will have the visitor management system. We also are currently uh, working on the key fobs, uh, having key uh, security and key management for buildings of our size is very important. And so these, if you think of a hotel key, that is uh, programmed to open a hotel door be for a certain period. So if I check into the hotel today, I have access today and tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the keys for our staff members, that everyone will be issued a FOB and they will um, have access to the building during the designated time. So a teacher would be in the morning, out in the afternoon, uh, a coach, might be in in the afternoon and out in the evening. So different people's roles will give them access to different facilities at different times. Uh, so that again is in all of the schools right now, uh, or I should say will be in the schools. Right now, Roland Green is getting their wiring done for that. They have the first school and then it'll be moving over to Robinson, JJ, and then across the street. Uh, we also have, um, we had an, uh, an architect who came in and did a nice review of our uh, entry vestibules to give us some recommendations there. And we have also added security cameras in uh, all of our schools. We've had them in some schools and they are now in public spaces. They'll be in all of the schools. So okay. there has been a lot going on for security. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And in today's world, I think every parent worries <laughs> mm -hmm. when they put their child on the bus, you know. So mm -hmm. knowing that all those things are in place and that it's an ongoing process in the s school system Absolutely. is, uh, you know, is really important. It's something, it's, it's on my thoughts and in my actions every day. <laughs> um, certainly, we are very fortunate that our community is supporting any of the changes and improvements that we're making. And uh, we have people who are fortunately being able to manage the money that we've been assigned to be able to use that in very positive directions. Oh, excellent. 
So just because things have wound down now <laughs> doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of, there isn't a lot of activity going on on the campus. So would you explain what's going Absolutely. on? Absolutely. <laughs> we have uh, well, we started the day after school ended. So last Thursday, uh, our facilities department, uh, working with DBW and also with outside contractors, uh, pulled up some of the parking lots and the access roads at the Jordan Jackson School and paving is taking place there um, pretty much as we speak. Uh, we needed to get that done right away because on Monday we start with the Champs Summer Institute which will bring about 700 students into the schools over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have a higher number of Champs registrations at this point than we had all year last year. So we're really looking forward to having those classes and camps very well attended. There's still registrations, um, time to register students for the CHAMPS programs, but we're excited about that. Uh, we also will be beginning uh, next week with summer schools and extended year services for students with disabilities and, um, and other enrichment camps. So we're excited about having students back on campus. Uh, over at the high school, that is where a lot of the action is happening. Uh, right now, the front walkway has been, uh, the cement and concrete has been pulled up and it's going to be repaved. Uh, that had been aging and uh, there were some cracks. We wanted to get that all fixed up. So that right now is pulled up and will be uh, paved soon. But the back of the high school is where the real action is. Uh, we are replacing what's known as the curtain wall, basically the back wall of the uh, high school. Uh, the windows were failing. Uh, the heaters uh, that were attached to the windows were failing. Uh, doors were rusting, and we needed to make some change back there. So uh, about three years ago, uh, Micah Hearn from the DPW had uh, written a proposal to the MSBA, which is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, and they are paying half for this of this construction project. Mm -hmm. And so we've been gearing up for it for um, about two or three years, particularly this year. And um, we have a project manager that's assigned by the state. However, our folks in our facilities department are uh, overseeing it also. And right now they're pulling out the windows in the back of the high school. It's all fenced off so it'll be safe. And uh, we are hopeful that it will be completed by Labor Day. Uh, however, just in case, we do have some contingency plans if needed. But uh, it's been uh, very busy at the high school as teachers were packing up their belongings because as you can imagine, with the wall that will be coming off, they needed to move out all of their uh, materials from classrooms. So that's, uh, that's really big news. And then, you know, you look out on our, our track and fields and you see students and coaches who are practicing throughout the year. So it's, although our schools close, it is um, surprising to people how much activity takes place. We have uh, students who are registering. I've met just in the last couple of days a number of families who are coming in to register their students moving from other towns. So a lot happening. You don't get to take much time off during <laughs> the don't. summer, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny as uh, people are so surprised to hear. They're like, well, what do you do during the summer? <laughs> We're busy. <laughs> what don't I do? <laughs> and more like we, it. we do, we, our um, office assistants, our custodial, our administrators, we work regular schedules. Um, our technology department is working overtime this year with all of the, that's going on there. But what we do is we try to create some um, uninterrupted office hours, particularly for um, the office assistants who may be doing inventory in a, you know, a stock room closet or just trying to get some materials prepared for the fall. So we do post our office hours. Doesn't mean we're not there. It just means that we're trying to uh, kind of limit the times that we're having meetings and uh, always willing to change those around if anybody wants to meet with us. But try to have some uninterrupted work time. <laughs> it seems like it was very busy, exciting mm -hmm. year. And of course, 
you have to look forward to the future. Absolutely. <laughs> so is there something that you may be looking forward to next year? Yes, you know, we um, a couple things may not sound really exciting. For example, our district has created a, a data team so that we can really dig in and look at data from whether it be uh, tests such as MCAS or SATs, um, all sorts of all sorts of data, suspension data, um, information that can show us the trends and patterns and help us look for some areas that we can improve in whether it be in the academics or other areas. Uh, so that data team is new and exciting for us, although probably doesn't sound very exciting to the public. Um, we'll be into the second year of the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren mm -hmm. Support Group. And that is uh, one of the highlights of this year, although we'll be going into our second year. It's a growing group. Uh, about two years ago, maybe spring before last, uh, Melissa Leonard, who is a preschool teacher at Rolling Green, had started to notice that there were a number of her young children who were being raised by grandparents and that their parents had, um, for a variety of reasons, were not able to step in and keep that role as, as parents. And she asked me if she could, you know, just pick up a, a box of Joe from Dunkin' Donuts and be able to sit and talk with people. I thought it was a great idea. And then uh, Christine Dooling, our head nurse for the district, uh, at the same time was also seeing some information about, you know, children who've been affected by trauma and how we can support them. And I linked the two of them together. And um, they did their first grandparents raising grandchildren group, and they had maybe one or two people. And then they did, they said, we're going to keep it going. And so they did this year. And then I was able to link them up with our Council on Aging, because that seems like a, a, a really nice connection. And um, Josephine Madrazo from the COA had reached out to see what she can do to support schools. And so that was a nice combination because to be able to meet there rather than one of the schools, great location for grandparents raising grandchildren. And so as they move into their second year, they now have a core group of grandparents who participate in the monthly meetings. Uh, that group went to the state conference of grandparents raising grandchildren. And so I, I see that a lot of good is going to come from that group. So I'm excited about that as it moves into its second full year next year. Uh, you know, certainly the, uh, the technology advancements are exciting for us because they're, they're going to be uh, giving students greater opportunities for engagement in their learning. And, um, you know, the teachers that we talked about, there's just, there's going to be a lot of, um, there's some new things. I think that as I move into my third year as superintendent, I look at stability as being a very key component of what I can bring to this district. I have a team that we formed two years ago. Me, uh, our finance and operations, Mr. Donahue, and our teaching and learning assistant superintendent, Mr. Conley. Uh, we've hired several new principals over the last few years. And so to be able to have, going into our third year, be able to provide our students, our staff and faculty, and our parents and community the stability um, of strong leadership, I think is what I'm looking forward to most. And I think that is a real gift mm. to the community <clears throat> because if the school system is stable, the kids are stable, the parents feel better, and it does kind of uplift the, co the whole community. Absolutely. You know, we're very fortunate um, with, for example, our school committee. Our school committee is, again, maintaining stability for another um, uh, year. And change is good, but sometimes you just need to, you, you've made change and you need to be able to grow within it and be able to thrive in that way. So I, I'm, I'm really grateful that we have, uh, you know, another year to look forward to that we just can keep doing it better. That's great. <laughs> well, I always enjoy talking to you. Thanks, Margie. And um, I look forward to having you next year. Thank and that you. We, we can continue our conversation. <laughs> thank you so much for being my guest. You're very welcome. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to having you next time on The Learning Curve.